Welcome to this. Oh. Welcome to this evening's City Council meeting. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the roll? Council President Beggs? Present. Council Member Burke? Here. Council Member Cathcart? Present. Council Member Kinnear? Present. Council Member Mum? Here. Council Member Stratton? Here. Council Member Wilkerson? Present. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. All right. Well, we're going to start off with a proclamation for Earth Day, since it is Earth Week, and Mother Nature is completely cooperating today. And um, uh, we can see out the Spokane, out our windows, the Spokane River. If you're in Chambers, which there's only one council member here, but we're getting a good view. So, anyway. I'll start. Whereas the global community faces extraordinary challenges relating to global health issues, food and water shortages, and economic struggles, and all people, regardless of race, gender, income, or geography, have a right to a healthy, sustainable environment with economic growth, and whereas a green economy can be achieved on the individual level through educational efforts, public policy, and consumer activism campaigns, since it is necessary to broaden and diversify this global movement to achieve maximum success. And whereas Earth Day is the beginning of a new year for environmental stewardship commitments, to implement sustainability efforts and commit to an Earth Day resolution, and it is understood that the citizens of our global community must step forward and take action to create a green economy to combat the aforementioned global challenges. Now, therefore, I, Nadine Woodward, Mayor of the City of Spokane, on behalf of the citizens of Spokane, do hereby proclaim April 22, 2021, as Earth Day in Spokane, and urge all community members, businesses, and institutions to use Earth Day to celebrate the Earth and commit to building a sustainable and green economy. And I have a quick question. Do we know who Laura Bromley is? Yeah, she's here for um, the shoreline. Okay, great. So, but anyway, I don't see Chair Evans with us yet from the Spokane Tribe. Um, she is planning on joining us. So we are going to have uh, we're going to have two administration reports. One is going to be on the STA Youth Summer Pass, and I believe I see uh, Brandon Rapez Betty, uh, who's going to give us a report on that. Thank you, Council President and Council Members. I'm going to share my screen in just a second. I will be sharing to you, sharing with you this evening about uh, a, a region-wide summer pass pilot program uh, recently approved by the STA Board of Directors. And just a technical question, uh, will Hannah be sharing the ability to share my screen? Let's see. She is working on it. Oh, she is working on it. Okay. Well, I'll dive in with uh, some of the details off the top of my head. Oh, there it goes. I'll go ahead and share now. Uh, so, again, my name is Brandon Rapiz Betty. I'm the Communications and Customer Service Director for Spokane Transit. Uh, tonight, we are going to be talking about the Regional Summer Youth Pass Pilot Program. Uh, on last Thursday afternoon, our Board of Directors approved a motion to execute a Regional Summer Youth Pass Pilot, PTBA wide, which is our public transportation benefit area, funded up to $380,000 with unspent monies from the SCC Transit Center project. That project was a little over $900,000 under budget. A uh, portion of that was state funds that went back to the state, uh, but there were local funds that, that STA can then apply to this regional program. Uh, the uh, pilot objective is to gather data and estimate costs for future regional or jurisdictional 
uh, contractual ridership programs. Uh, similar to Universal Transit, Acts Pass, Universal Transit Access Pass programs, we call it UTAP at STA, uh, we have those programs in place with the city for city employees, county for county employees, Spokane Regional Health District, Kindle Yards, uh, and then we also have those programs in place at all of the local colleges and universities. Uh, for implementation steps, for our implementation steps, uh, the first thing that we'll be doing is procuring cards. And we've estimated about 15,000 cards will be used throughout the region. Uh, that was based off of numbers that were uh, in a first version of this program that we did with the City of Spokane in uh, 2019. That year there were 6,000 cards available. Uh, the, city dis the city library distributed about 5,500 cards, and about 3,500 of those cards were used. Uh, so we increased that number, and then we doubled it to, uh, to project uh, for the rest of the region. So again, that'll be 15,000 cards that STA will procure. Uh, we're having those programmed. These will be hard plastic magnetic stripe cards. So as young people get on the bus, they'll swipe it just like they do some of their, uh, some of their bus passes. For card delivery and distribution, uh, we're going to be working with the libraries. The city set up an excellent model for that uh, when we did the program before. Uh, students throughout the region will be able to go to their nearest library and uh, pick up a card. Uh, and then at that point, we'll be gathering a little bit of data so that we can begin the data tracking process. Uh, we will be tracking uh, what grade the student is in, what school the student goes to, and the school district and the card number. No identifying information will be gathered. We are just tracking the card, not the student. Uh, what that is able to do, then we can look at data based on age group, based on distribution location, uh, based on uh, a lot of different factors that we can, we can uh, dig through the data. Once we, dig through, once we have all of that information, we'll be uh, monitoring and reviewing uh, so that we can establish those cost estimates. Our project partners, are uh, pretty deep in a region-wide program. So we start with our distribution partners, which are the city and county library, and we'll also be working with the Liberty Lake Municipal Library. Uh, we have our promoted service partners, and these are all of the services that we're going to promote to, to you who are using, using the bus this summer. Uh, so those will be a lot of parks and recreation departments throughout the region, aquatic centers, libraries, summer meal programs, uh, and also other fun things, private sector, Museum of Arts and Culture is going to offer a discount, uh, Mobius is going to offer a discount, and we're reaching out to many other uh, locations that are within about a quarter mile of transit routes uh, that youth would be interested in for uh, summer activities. For program communication and marketing, uh, we'll be working with our communication partners. Uh, the communication partners are the PIOs from the various jurisdictions or, or uh, designated staff members and also the communication staff at all of the school districts. They'll be critical in helping get information about, about, about the program, where to pick up the cards, uh, and just general questions. One of the things that we're going to make sure that we are promoting are our health and safety campaign because uh, we are still in a pandemic, and we want to make sure that parents and students know how that they can use transit safely. Uh, we'll be talking about the requirements on our riders to wear face coverings and to spread out on the bus where space is available. Uh, but it'll also be about the steps STA is taking on the bus, uh, on route disinfecting, uh, our barriers between our uh, passengers and our coach operators, um, and other, other safety measures that are in place. We'll have a creative campaign to help get the word out as well. Uh, those materials will start to be shared about a month before the program begins. The program is estimated to start on June 15th, just right after school uh, goes into summer uh, session. And uh, we'll, so we'll promote from May 15th to June 15th to make sure everybody knows where to go and when. Um, I mentioned monitoring and evaluation, so we'll be tracking the data every few weeks and reporting that to the STA Board of Directors uh, on a monthly basis. And at the end of the three months, we'll uh, gather our total information and compare it to our initial estimates. We've initially estimated that the cost of the program is going to be about 285,000, but as we learned with the City of Spokane program, uh, our first estimate was not close. <laughs> the program was much more successful than we anticipated in 2019, 
Uh, so this estimate really is a starting point, and then we'll just gather information and see where we're at at the end. We'll divvy that up into kind of a jurisdictional estimate so that then the jurisdictions throughout the PTBA can start their budgeting process for uh, their, their next year's budget. Uh, and that'll be a part of our summary performance and cost information. Uh, a lot of the details are still being worked out. Uh, we're going to have an informational meeting with uh, our partners from the dis our distribution partners, our program partners, and also our communication partners this coming Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, if, uh, I've got contacts with the city of Spokane, of course, but all the other jurisdictions as well. So, But if anybody does have any questions about that meeting, I'd be happy to share the Zoom link so we can make sure everybody has all the information. Um, that is all that I have uh, for presentation, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council might have. Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, th thanks, Brandon, for the presentation. Uh, I'm just wondering, last year there was, uh, I think, kind of a surprise expenditure on your part, 76000 for additional security costs. And I know this is a different demographic, but I'm wondering, is that something that you're also planning for uh, with this program? No, no, the additional security measures were during the pandemic and they were related to uh, when we froze fares so that we could have passengers board through the rear doors. Uh, we then uh, stopped that practice once we had the barriers in place so that passengers could safely board separating themselves from the coach operator. Uh, so we're not anticipating those additional costs for the summer youth program. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, yes, Council Member Mum. We're just so excited about this program. I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank um, all the other council members and commissioners who, along with the four of us who serve on STA, voted unanimously to support this program. And I just want to put out there to moms and dads and kids, start making your plans now. If you want to have a summer job somewhere on uh, the other side of town, this is your chance to do it. If you want to make different plans for places to go, friends to see, uh, child care plans, uh, put that together because this is going to open up your summer like you've never seen it before. If you haven't been on an STA bus, they are clean, they are fast, and they come very often. You can just go to the Spokane Transit website and plug in where you want to go. And it will help map it for you. And what a great opportunity for people to explore different parts of the city and to get out and about uh, when we have all this great weather. And I'm excited to see the data come back and um, have discussions about how, how to support youth and support transit use in the future. Council Member Kinnear. Thank you. And as elated as I was that it was unanimous and that Council Member uh, Mum and I worked to get it before the board, we took it that far, but then Brandon took it the next piece and was able to really put it together. And I so much appreciate your effort, Brandon, because without that next step, it wouldn't look like this. So kudos to you. Thank you for your hard work. I think this is going to be a wonderful op opportunity, not just for Spokane, but for the whole region. And it's going to get kids out using the bus. And those are our future riders. So I'm elated, as is the other two, Councilmember Burke and Councilmember Stratton, who serve on STA. So, Brandon, hats off to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Kinnear, and I appreciate those kind words. Uh, but I, I am one person uh, of many at STA who are working hard on this program, uh, kind of fast-tracking it to make sure that we're ready by June 15th. Also, on behalf of our CEO, uh, Susan Meyer, uh, she is also very happy that we were able to find a path forward with this uh, that um, helps uh, honor the uh, revenue revenue that comes into STA for future contracts, but uh, establishing the cost estimates for, for the rest of the region. There was one important detail that I am remiss that I didn't mention, and I wanted to define uh, youth uh, for, for everyone so that we were all clear. Um, youth will be defined as ages 6 to 18, or enrolled in school up to and including grade 12. Uh, when we did the program with the city of Spokane a couple of years ago, uh, we did find some uh, seniors who were 19 that um, weren't included in some of the uh, summer pass program. We also had some students who 
uh, were over 18 but still enrolled in school. And so uh, as long as uh, people are enrolled in school up to grade 12 and they fall between, or fall between 6 and 18, they, they are good for, for the program. And Brandon, zero to five are already free. Yeah, with a paying adult, zero to five are free. Okay, that's good. You don't want any four-year-olds going solo. <laughs> so that's good. Um, Brandon, you mentioned something about cost um, at 285000 estimated, but just a, I'm pretty sure that's not out of pocket costs. That's, that's foregone fares, potentially, which shows the usage, which may or may not have been money we were lost and certainly isn't out of pocket costs for the transit association. Correct. It is foregone fares that are then being. Uh, uh, replaced with the project savings from the Spokane Community College Transit right. Center. Yeah, good. Yeah, we're really excited, and um, I, I'm most excited because I think we're uh, creating the next generation of bus riders who are, will be so so at ease riding the bus that they'll go anywhere, and you know, rather than pay $1,000 a month uh, for a car, they'll probably do transit for a lot longer. So that's great news, especially coming this week. Special kudos to our council members who serve on the STA board and led the way. And special thanks to uh, Tim Hattenberg out in the Spokane Valley who helped, uh, helped us move forward. Thanks for that. Um, we now have um, uh, Spokane Tribal Chairperson Carol Evans is on the phone. And if Chair Evans, if you could hit star three. Oh, well, I'll welcome her and then do that. Um, Chair Evans, welcome. We're about to read the land acknowledgement for the first time, but welcome to our meeting. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I was trying to join it by the um, computer, and it wouldn't let me in. All right. Well, thank you for making it. Bef before we hear from you, um, Councilmember Stratton is going to read the land acknowledgement that uh, council approved a few weeks ago uh, in consultation with um, your tribe. So she's going to read that for us for the first time, and it's in our agenda packet. And then after that, we'll hear from you on uh, the state of things in Spokane. Councilmember Stratton. Thank you, and I am very, very proud to read this tonight. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded land of the Spokane people, and that these lands were once the major trading center for the Spokane, as they shared this place and welcomed other area tribes through their relations, history, trade, and ceremony. We also want to acknowledge that the land holds the spirit of the place through its knowledge, culture, and all the original peoples since time immemorial. As we take a moment to consider the impacts of colonization, may we also acknowledge the strength and resiliency of the Spokans and their relatives. As we work together, making decisions that benefit all, may we do so as one heart, one mind, and one spirit. We are grateful to be on the shared lands of the Spokane people and ask for the support of their ancestors and all relations. We ask that you recognize these injustices that forever change the lives of the Spokane people and all their relatives. We agree to work together to stop all acts of continued injustices towards Native Americans and all of our relatives. It is time for reconciliation. We must act upon the truth and take actions that will create restorative justice for all people. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Stratton. Um, well, Chair Evans, thank you again for joining us. And um, I invited you to come speak to us uh, this auspicious week of Earth Week. And I was interested in hearing your perspective as a longtime steward and from a long lineage of stewards of this land of, of what your perspective is on the, the land and the water and the air and anything else you wanted to share with the Spokane City Council this evening. 
Ah, Hestalu Petsia. Good evening, my friends and relatives. Somasa Fluhi Squest. Somasa is my Spokinch name, my Indian name, and my English name is Carol Evans, uh, chairwoman of the Spokane Tribal Business Council. It's a real honor to rep represent my tribe as I speak before you today. First and foremost, I really want to thank the City Council for formalizing this land acknowledgement. It means a lot to my people. It recognizes that the Spokane City is located on the ceded lands of the Spokane people. And the word people for my people is an important term. In our language, we say skulech, and skulech refers to good people. As I grew up and my great my grandmother called it Skulek, she I always said it thought it meant Indian people, but it means good people. So as a gesture of goodwill I offer to you, you are good people. You are Skulek and my people are Skulek. So I think that's important that we acknowledge that we are good people. This land acknowledgement acknowledges that these lands were once the major set trading center for my people, for my ancestor, ancestors, which for me recognizes that my ancestors were a river people. They were a salmon people who waited for the return of the salmon since time immemorial. This land acknowledgement um, impacts the, the colonization of my people. It takes consideration of a people, my ancestors, who did not understand the concept of owning land. They were a people who believed that the land was a gift to them, a gift to them that they were responsible to take care of so that land would stay there for future generations and continue to sustain the, the ways of the life of their people. When this land was taken from my ancestors, um, it took away more than just the land. It took away their way of life, their culture, their customs, their tradition, and in many senses, their language. This traumatized my ancestors and continues to traumatize my people in the current day world. However, the Spokane are a strong people. We're resilient, and that's acknowledged in your land acknowledgement. We have been here since time immemorial. We are still here and will be here forever going into the future. That is what this land acknowledgement represents to me. It acknowledges the importance of working together, making decisions together, and it is for the benefit of all, for my people and for all of the people you serve, that it is for the benefit that we do this with one heart, one mind, and one spirit. This is the right approach. This land acknowledgement acknowledges the injustices that change the lives of my people, of my ancestors. And by acknowledging this, this injustice, these injustices, it allows my people to begin the healing process. So on behalf of the Spokane Tribe of Indians, I thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart for adopting such a meaningful land acknowledgement that promotes healing for my people and for all the people of the area. So thank you for that. As we... Um, as, we've, as I move on to, to address what you wanted, uh, had talked with me, Brian, um, we're here on Earth Week, as you had said, with Earth Day being on Thursday. And I always kind of go back when I, when I hear about Earth Day. The first Earth Day was on April 22, 1970, and that will be 51 years ago this Thursday. And to think about that and um, think about today, how we have 190 countries that acknowledge Earth Day. We have over a billion people in the world that recognize and honor Earth Day. 
And I try to put that in perspective to see what that means. When we think of a world with about 8 billion people, at least one-eighth of that, of the world population, is, is acknowledging Earth Day, the importance of Mother Earth. And then when I think of the number of people in the world, I think of how it took us two million years just to reach one billion people in the world. And then after that, it only took 200 years to get to eight billion. And for me, that shows that we really need to be concerned about taking care of Mother Earth. So what Earth Day represents is what my ancestors lived every day. My ancestors believed that the Creator gave all people and all things the knowledge and wisdom to live in harmony. My ancestors believed this is the original instructions given to them by the Creator. They referred to them as the great laws. For example, when we consider sacred foods, the sacred foods given to my ancestors were roots, berries, salmon, and wildlife. Sacred foods give our bodies nourishment. We must be thankful for these sacred foods. We must not waste them. We must not poison them. In addition, the, the, the sacred laws given to us um, tell us to respect all, to take care to have clean air, to take care to have clean water, to have a healthy land. And if we do that, then our sacred foods will continue to provide us nourishment. That's important for us and for the whole world. And when you think of this going on from generation to generation, if we can continue to have sacred food, healthy foods, it's a harmonious cycle. As we consider the salmon, which was really important to my ancestor, that salmon gave of himself he gave nourishment to my ancestors so that they could live from year to year. And think of his journey, the journey that he took to go out to the ocean thousands of miles. And then when he returned, the thousands of miles and the barriers that he went through to come up to return for spawning, to come back to feed my ancestors, you know, he provided an important nutrient that my ancestors lived on, and he lived as a result of a healthy cycle. And so those salmon cannot survive without clean air, clean water, and a healthy land. Nowadays, in the current world, I think, what is the state of our natural world? What is the state of our air, water, and land? When I think of it, I think, um, it's sad. It's a sad thought. I think that our, our Mother Earth is sick. She's sick with pollutants and with poisons. And I think it's our duty, um, like said in, in the land acknowledgement, let's work together to help Mother Earth heal. Let's acknowledge climate change and its impact on our world. Some of my elders would say to fix things, we have to put it back to the way it used to be. And how do we do that? Well, when I ask them, they say, you have to bring back the ceremonies that honor air, water, and land, that show how important the air, water, and land are. They, they say to bring back the ceremonies that honor animals, birds, and fish. They say bring back the ceremonies that honor one another, for we are all important and we are all creation of our God, of our Creator. They say to bring back ceremonies that allow us to follow the laws given to us by our Creator. If we do this, everything will fall into place. Once again, we can and will live in harmony like our ancestors once lived. That is the belief of the elders in my community. When I consider the state of how things are going in our natural world, I think we have a lot of people, a lot of people, near 8 billion in the world. We drive a lot of cars that give off a lot of, of, of poisonous into the air. 
we use a lot of water, um, and it's scarce. It will become scarce, and we pollute. So the state of our world is that Mother Earth needs help from us. And I think that um, in regards to what the city has done, I think the city has done a lot of good things, a lot of positive things that are good for Mother Earth. For example, um, the city, I understand, has renewed a renewed commitment or is considering a renewed commitment to address greenhouse gases. The city is um, committed to electrifying city vehicles. I think those are good things. Those are good things that will help Mother Earth. Also, the city um, is concerned about the low river flows and has a task team looking at alternatives. And then when you think of the water storage tanks, the new plant that is nearing completion that will possibly be the largest PCB removal plant in the United States, and in addition, it will attain low levels of phosphorus. Also, many of the stormwater basins and alternatives have been constructed, reducing the amount of untreated stormwater entering into the Spokane River. So the city has done a lot of good things to help Mother Earth with the storage tanks, with um, even when we think about social justice, to change in the names of Fort George Wright Way to Wish Talks Ways, to developing this land acknowledgement that has a lot of meaning, meaning to it. Those are all good things that the city does, and they continue to support the tribe in our salmon recovery efforts. For this, we thank the city. You are truly becoming stewards of the future. When I think of possibly some of the things that maybe the city could work on or maybe ways they could um, find to do additional work. Um, possibly um, looking at ways to um, change a culture of widespread water use during the summer. I think we're all guilty of that. We all love to water our lawns, and that causes water shortages. Changing that culture will be difficult, and we understand that. Possibly um, another thing would be to look at the pipes that are running directly into the Spokane River, the point source pipes that go into the river. Are they providing pollution? How do we address that? How does the city address that? I think those are things to consider in the future. Things re related to social justice or for the citizens of the city, especially people of color, I think the city should consider um, affordable housing and housing ownership for people of color. I think the city's got to be mindful of education for children of color and for all children. And I heard um, an earlier speaker talking about education and the importance of it. So I think those are all good things that the city could think of, you know, as they move forward and as they try to um, address the environment, as they move forward addressing services to the population of the city. Because for the Spokane tribe people, um, even though it is on the homelands, the city is located on the homelands of the, the Spokane tribe. The city serves a lot of tribal people that are from other tribal nations, from over 300 other tribal nations. And so there are a lot of indigenous peoples in the Spokane, and we're really thankful for that because those people do have indigenous knowledge. So today I encourage us all to um, come together to share and find ways to help Mother Earth, especially this week as we prepare to celebrate the 51st anniversary of Earth Day. And, um, and I, I really hope for all of us that the Creator will help us find wisdom and knowledge to once again live in harmony and in accordance with the laws that he provided for us. So I, I truly believe that he has provided your ancestors some similar, um, similar laws. And so I, I think that what we, if you really read the land acknowledgement and you really believe in what is in there, I think we can 
we can help Mother Earth together. And I, I just think that's, that's a wonderful message to start out with the land acknowledgement on Earth Week and, and, and encourages us, us all ways to identify ways to help Mother Earth. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say at this point. I really thank you for taking the time to listen to me tonight. And I really uh, wish you all continued safety and, um, from this pandemic, this, this terrible pandemic we've been in this past year. It, it's, done, it's been devastating for my people. My people are a people that like to sit down and have meals together and, and get together for powwows, for, for sweats, for um, just everything we do, and it's been really hard. And I know it's been hard, especially for the children. So I do really um, um, am proud of all of, the, all of the work you do, and I thank you for your hard work for this. And really, may God bless each and every one of you with good hearts and good minds to continue on with the important work that you do. That is all I have to have to say. She uhoy, lem lemch. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Chair Evans, for spending some time with us and sharing. It's just, it's a remarkable moment for me and for all of our peoples, no matter where they come from, no matter where they live. We look forward to continuing to consult with you and the tribe as we rebuild our, our world and our community and seek greater harmony together. Have a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now, uh, under our new theme of hearing from our neighborhoods, one neighborhood at a time, instead of all at a large town hall meeting, we have uh, neighborhood council chair, Dave Lucas, from my home neighborhood, the Rockwood neighborhood. Dave, welcome. Well, thank you, Council Member Beggs. I appreciate that, um, and the entire council. I am grateful to have to be here tonight, and I thank you for all your work and your support to the neighborhoods and that of the city staff as well as we go through uh, the programs that basically help us at the neighborhood. I'm going to go ahead and cover a couple of items today. I think I have the screen to share, so let me see if I can make this work. Give it a sec. Come on. Slow, slow, slow. Maybe I got to do this first. Let's try that. Give me a second. Bear with me. Um, so a short presentation, and we'll go through it quickly. I'll take up much of your time this evening, but again, what we're working to do for the neighborhood. Just kind of a general uh, synopsis of the layout of the Rockwood neighborhood. We primarily are located on the um, majority of Hill with the general and east to west. Hey, Dave. Um, yes. you're uh, cutting out a little bit. If you turn your video off, sometimes that helps okay. the connection. Okay. So you have us. Yeah. Hey, Dave, um, Hannah Lee, if you want to undo your screen share, Hannah Lee will do it from here and she'll change it and that'll help your bandwidth perhaps. Okay. Now I can stop video there. Now. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we. I think now that Hannah Lee's going to share it, we. It'll be fine. You can have your video on. Okay. It doesn't matter. I just. I couldn't get out of screen or out of the video that was in the screen share. So. Um. We'll go ahead and go to slide two. Thank you. Um, uh, majority of single family homes, but there is some multifamily and a few local businesses. Certainly one school, as most people know, and then 
four smaller triangle parts, which have been most of the historical uh, attention that we've gotten, and historical greenways, which we are working on, and certainly working to protect the historic tree-lined streets that we've been able to maintain that have made up the majority of a large portion that is a national historic district. So mostly built uh, with majority we already, and there's, so there's limited infill. Although we have we had some challenges with some of the new construction, both from challenges from sidewalk construction or lack thereof, and sidewalk maintenance. So that's certainly something that we're seeing more of that some of the other neighborhoods have had uh, problems with for a while now. So next slide, please. So generally, uh, we saw kind of the change from 2019 to 2020, uh, significant drop down in attendance, but we generally have about a historic of about 44 voting members, uh, usually about the 12 core members of the committee that attend. And you can see a variety of typical uh, meeting attendance, 15 to 25, but has changed uh, certainly over the 2019 and throughout the period of going remote uh, during COVID. We have an uh, email distribution of about 577, up a little over 3% from last year. Facebook followers have also increased a little, but still only a portion of the total number of residents that we have. And so as we go through, one of our continuing themes will be to continue our outreach programs to get more folks involved. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, you can see some of the presenters we've had over the years or over the, the last two years, really, because it's kind of work, but certainly recurring with the council members, uh, police updates. Although I will say certainly the high uh, attendance and interest has been many of the horticulture or arborist the uh, and certainly things like the Spokane Master Gardener was one of the delightful president presenters that people really followed and found a lot of excitement and ran the meeting quite long with the continuing questions upon questions, uh, as well as the continuing support we've gotten from cops and other local agencies that you can see on there. Next slide, please. One of the things that we found, again, we're really grateful that the city council has continued to prioritize that, is the community engagement grant. And so we were able to before things were uh, closed up, we were able to do our second annual neighborhood block party. Very successful. Great opportunity for the neighborhood to come together and uh, interact. And certainly one of the other things that we've been able to be very successful with is a welcome bag package that we've also hoping to restart here in the new year where we're able to provide a welcome bag with information about the neighborhood, the city, even things we talked about STA earlier with the STA maps and opportunity to see uh, what they what is available here in Spokane for new residents. And certainly one of the things that's a priority for the neighborhood would be the ability to maintain those. And certainly that's something we look forward to uh, restarting in this new year. So next slide, please. And then I know this is something is seeing some ups and downs over the last couple of years as the neighborhood cleanup program. So 2019 was really our most successful year with the ability to collect, certainly if we judge success, on the amount of cleanup we're able to do. And so that certainly was one of the best years. Last year was a little cumbersome, the dump houses and trying to ensure that we were able to do that. And we see that that will probably be the outcome this year. So it's been a little more confusing and a little more challenging to follow. So we're looking at how we're able to connect with our neighbors, particularly those that might have a challenge with getting online or being able to access the online uh, cleanup program. So looking at other alternatives as, well as uh, potential for neighborhood volunteer force that might be able to go help some of those neighbors that have a struggle or unable to make uh, use of the dump pass but still need that opportunity. So we'll be working on that as we move forward. Uh, next slide, please. And really then traffic one of the other large programs the neighborhood council work through. And certainly I think one of the ubiquitous concerns across many of the neighborhood councils is the speeding 
here in Spokane. And so we have a pilot program that will be going this year up by Hutton Elementary, uh, really looking at how we can reduce speed around the school and really try to protect the kids that might be transiting to and from school. So this will be exciting. It won't be, as you can see, not a speed bump and not a speed hump, but a speed table to accommodate for snow plowing and other traffic as it goes through on Garfield. So it will be exciting to see how that comes out and uh, to really get the feedback over the next couple of years, both from traffic monitoring, but also from things like city uh, snowplow crews and the streets department, how that actually functions. And then we are that should be going in for this year would be trying to look at some traffic calming applications on 18th Avenue, really to mitigate some of the pedestrian safety. There's a lot of traffic that goes there pedestrian-wise as far as the Manitou Park, as well as the Rocket Bakery. So looking at how that uh, folks transit that, we're looking at different options of how we can uh, reduce some of the speeds there and make it safer for pedestrian traffic, which certainly goes back a little bit to the earlier comment as we look at sidewalks. That's on Upper Terrace, but still a similar issue where cars uh, go by as well as, well as pedestrians. Uh, next slide, please. And then really, as I about the layout, we have the historic Rockwood neighborhood, which is a national historical district, as well as filled with significant tree-lined streets. So really continuing to work with the city, how we're able to preserve uh, those green spaces as well as the uh, National Historic District and the things that are there, whether it's things like the original uh, trolley stop or old walls that may be there, things that have obviously been here for quite a long time as we look at that. We also have a great partner with the Rockwood Garden Club, which is also a subcommittee now to work on some of the triangle parts and maintaining those over time. So we'll continue to work on that preservation. We had hoped to get more done, but certainly when we had to adjust our scheduling, we kind of really fell off that during 2020. So we're hoping to revive that effort in the, in the future years as we move forward. Next slide, please. And like many others, 2020, we had some challenges. So as we started the year, we had down meetings and lost access to our regular meeting location. So as we move that and switch to the Zoom meeting, that will us to continue to at least update our neighbors on what was going on. Uh, we tried to shorten that just because we knew that there was a lot of demand for people on Zoom meetings. And so we took out many of the educational presentations that we had done and focused on really neighborhood and updates that people might have. As mentioned, we were not able to talk for any in-person events and really went to an online format um, to really allow neighbors to uh, at least get many of the minimal needs they needed. We were able to maintain communications through uh, email and online sources to really assist with delivery and other things neighbors needed, uh, as well as during any type of maintenance when we had the trees down to be able to provide assistance for neighbors that uh, needed help with getting trees cleared. So, that was one of the things we were able to maintain, but really looking forward to in-person meetings, hopefully this fall, uh, hoping that things are open up and we're able to work together again. Um, next slide, please. Some of the things we didn't get, um, we're gonna continue our resident engagement programs, as I mentioned, but we had hoped to appoint a social media coordinator and really try to grow that. Uh, we were not able to do that. We're gonna continue to try to work uh, to improve our outreach through Nextdoor, Facebook, and uh, online media as far as trying to uh, move forward. We do intend probably to keep Zoom up even after we're able to resume in person because it provides an opportunity, I think, for neighbors that aren't able to attend in person uh, or have multiple schedules because we're able to record those meetings as well, allow them to view it at a later time. Uh, we would also like to update and continue the welcome bag distribution. We think that's a great program to welcome and engage our neighbors. And as I mentioned, we're going to really try to ramp up and hopefully get back into the historic preservation efforts with the green spaces and really maintain many of the uh, beautiful tree-lined streets that we have. 
As I mentioned, we're working on the uh, pilot, the speed hump or speed table, and working with the uh, city on the other projects that we've got going, whether it's traffic calming, speed monitoring, or cleanup programs, and really trying to continue that and hoping that we'll be able to expand that back to an in-person activity where we're able to the roll off events and really service the neighbors that may or may not be able to actually get to the dump and take advantage of a dump path and really work to help neighbors wherever they may be. And then hopefully the third annual Rockford Block Party. And then really the final slide and Tim, any questions? As I mentioned, really focus on continuing neighborhood engagement and participation. Uh, participate in any new traffic calming efforts and certainly the district models, we look at how that's going to uh, materialize in the new year. Trying to participate in as much as we can, the dump pass, and really look at how we're able to assist those neighbors that may struggle with being able to optimize the use of that. And as I mentioned, really looking how we can uh, restore that full program in the years coming up. Continuing to support our residents when we are able to, and really looking forward to the third annual Rockwood Block Party in late summer, if possible. So that really is the short presentation that I have of what's going on in the neighborhood. Any questions? And again, closing out with really, uh, I appreciate all the work that the city council and city staff provide to help the neighborhood really work on the different activities and the programs that we try to move forward to support our neighbors the best that we're able. Councilmember Kinnear. Dave, thank you. That was so informative. Um, I think you're the poster boy for how to run a neighborhood council because you've grown that and it's it's just a joy to watch it and it's it's great to attend in-person meetings. So um, looking forward to getting back to that soon. Thanks for all your hard work. It's appreciated. Yeah, well, thank you for the help and the support. It's certainly not, we have a great a group of neighbors and a great neighborhood council. So I'm very grateful. Yeah, thank you, Dave, so much for all you do. And just know that we have been uh, haranguing uh, solid waste to get more dump passes and maybe even start some neighborhood cleanups this fall. We can't do every neighborhood with roll-offs, but uh, we're continuing that. And I can't wait for that third annual Rockwood party. So we'll see you there. That's good. Thank you. Thanks so much. Say hello to everyone. I will. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Okay, that brings us to uh, boards and commissions appointments. Appoint Nicole Palmerton to a four-year term on the Civil Service Commission to begin on May 1, 2021 and expire on April 30, 2025. And reappointment of Dan Zimmerer to a three-year term on the Hotel Advisory Commission, also known as the Spokane Hotel and Motel Commission, to serve from January 1, 2021 through December 31, 2023. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Abstentions? All right. Both individuals are appointed. Thank you for your service. And again, if you have any interest in serving on one of our many numerous boards or commissions for the city, uh, contact the mayor's office. And if you're at our website for City of Spokane, just uh, type in boards and commissions and you can see all that are available. Thanks for that. Let's move to our legislative agenda. What's up first? Special Budget Ordinance C-36038, amending Ordinance Number C-35971, passed by the City Council December 14, 2020, and entitled an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the City of Spokane for 2021, making appropriations to the various funds of the City of Spokane government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2021, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage and declared an emergency and appropriating funds in public safety and judicial grant fund from other state agencies, $44,515 to uniform overtime, same amount. This action allows the acceptance of additional WASPIC grant funding. All right. Thank you for that. Councilmember Kinnear, you're sponsoring this, but I don't know if you have anything to add to. I, I don't. It's a grant. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it's for the... Um, Domestic, or I'm sorry, the rape kits to catch up on 
backlogs. Right. That's my recollection. So, Council President, correct me if I'm wrong. Nope. I think that is what it is, is to help continue. It's to pay overtime for detectives to follow up on those um, rape kits, I believe, the results that are coming back. I believe that's what it is. Um, we have one community member who wants to um, testify, and I'm going to apologize ahead of time if I don't get your name exactly right, but it's Amber, I'm going to say Osting. If you're there, Amber, if you want to hit star three. Not seeing anything from Amber. Um, any council commentary? Council member Mum. I just want to uh, relay that at the last Emerson uh, Garfield neighborhood meeting, uh, there was quite a discussion about the work that uh, the community and the council and the police department uh, are all working together to try to um, bring us back up to um, speed with these kits and with investigations in old cases. And there was some pretty um, uh, heartfelt testimony that was given by some folks who have lost family members and who would like to have these uh, kits tested and on behalf of other victims. And we discussed how it also affects the police department as well, who has to go on for sometimes decades, not having resolution to these cases. So there was very strong community support from at least one Northside neighborhood uh, for us to continue to support this kind of work. All right. Thank you. Any other council commentary? All right. This is a special budget ordinance. Takes five votes to um, pass. Uh, we'll have a roll call. Council Member Mum. Aye. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and aye. Council Member Burke. Aye. Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. Okay, that passes seven to zero. Uh, next resolution. Resolution 2021-32, declaring Infer Public Sector Incorporated a sole source provider for Infer CAD maintenance licensing at the Spokane City Fire Department and authorizing a contract with Infer Public Sector for Infer CAD maintenance licensing for a five-year term, $81,511.24 plus applicable tax annually. All right, we don't have any uh, community commentary for this contract and the sole source provider. Any council commentary? All right, hearing and seeing none, we'll have a roll call. Council Member Mum. Aye. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I. Council Member Burke. Aye. Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. Next ordinance. Ordinance C36033 relating <coughs> to a program participation criteria for the U-Help Utility Bill Payment Assistance Program and Partnership for Response to the COVID-19 Pandemic, enacting a new section 13.09.100 of the Spokane Municipal Code and declaring an emergency. All right, we have one community member requesting to speak and that's Nicolette Ockeltree. Nicolette, if you're there, if you want to hit star three. All right. Is that you, Nicolette? This is me. Okay. If you hear me. I, we can hear you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. You have up to okay. three minutes. Hi, Council. This is Nicolette Ockeltree. Um, I just wanted to thank you for extending this program for a seamless continuance on this much-needed assistance for citizens. According to the briefing paper, over 4,679 accounts were delinquent for 90 days or more as of January 2021. And that's a lot of people, that's a lot of days, and I hope that this will provide the, the assistance that's needed. And I'd like to ask all of you to please post this on your Facebook page, the city Facebook page, and for all the city council members to share it in order to give maximum exposure to citizens who may not be aware of this service because I've even told people about it and they didn't even know it was happening. And a lot of that's just because people get their news and information from different sources. 
So I'm hoping that we can use this very free and easy way to share this program so that people who need it get it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any council commentary? All right, we'll have a roll call. Council Member Mum. Aye. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Okay. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I. Council Member Burke. Aye. Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. And special thanks to staff for working hard to make that work for everybody. Uh, the next ordinance we're going to consider under our hearings. And that brings us. To 36035. Ordinance C 36035 aligning the greenhouse gas GHG reduction goals of the city of Spokane with state targets and amending sections 15.05.005.020 and 0.060 of the Spokane Municipal Code. And we discussed this at briefing about um, some very minor language amendments, and Councilmember Mum had one more suggestion, and so I'm looking for a motion to substitute. The version that was circulated about an hour ago with this one. Comment. Second. All right. Any discussion about the amendment? Substitution. Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor of substituting the ordinance indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, aye. Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right. It's substituted. Um, and so this ordinance uh, essentially just updates the city's commitment to meeting the greenhouse gas standards at the state level that are required under state law. And we did consult with Avista, which is probably one of the biggest factors in whether we're able to do that or not. And they suggested some language, which uh, is part of the amendment. And um, so appreciate that we could work with them on that. Um, we do have two people who have signed up to testify. Uh, first is Ann Murphy. If you would like to hit star three. All right. Ann, go ahead and introduce yourself, and you have up to three minutes. Well, thank you. Uh, good evening, Council President and members. I'm Ann Murphy, co president of the League of Women Voters of the Spokane area. And as we begin this Earth Week celebration, the League applauds the city of Spokane as it continues to move to be part of wider changes on climate issues. We support this ordinance aligning the greenhouse gas reduction goals of the city of Spokane with the state of Washington targets. The League of Women Voters of Washington supported the underlying measure, HB 2311, when it was passed in 2019 in the state legislature and our local league concurs with state league action and supports this local action to bring the city of Spokane in line with state agency goals. To be effective, the adoption and achievement of such goals much ha must happen at local levels around the state as well as the country and the world. In addition, the league commends the city for committing to the transparency of increased reporting and reassessment of goals and we thank you for your time on this important measure as we move forward in talking about more sustainability for the city of Spokane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we also have Nicolette Ockeltree if you want to hit star three. All right, Nicolette, go ahead. You have up to three minutes. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure what the supplemented um, version was because we didn't get a copy of that. It was just circulated to council, but not to the public. Uh, but I'm assuming, and I trust you guys, that it was all, all good and that Vista knew why they needed to make those, uh, those changes. But I did want to uh, say Happy Earth Day and thank you, Council President Beggs, for sponsoring uh, this ordinance to align the city greenhouse gas reduction goals with the state targets. I believe that progressive and attentive goals like these are not only good for the city, state, and planet, but they are very much in keeping with the spirit of Expo 74 when Spokane once led the world in a celebration of preservation and conservation for the environment, and uh, we hosted the very first World Fair with an environmental theme. 
So I'm once again taking this opportunity to uh, urge City Council to consider making a resolution committing to organizing a robust 50th anniversary for Expo 74, because it's one thing to make these environmental goals, it's another to achieve them. And doing so will take a lot of momentum and community engagement to achieve. Um, I also urge City Council to begin brainstorming what kinds of things will be necessary to continue this momentum and keep it up so that we can help each other plan and look ahead at what steps will be necessary to successfully achieve these critical goals. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, any council commentary? Councilmember Mum. I just want to address that the change was actually adding a period of time for an update of the sustainability plan. I believe it's every three years. Is that correct? That is correct. Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Council President, uh, I will not be supporting the ordinance this evening. And the main reason is I feel that Spokane, the, the people of our state have already taken on quite a bit of the burden in pushing back on climate change. Um, and we really need to focus, I think, on economic opportunity in our, in our city and, and less on putting ourselves in a potentially economically disadvantaged position. When the cities around us, the states around us, the nations around us aren't necessarily taking on these sorts of burdens, um, it, it means that we are going to be disadvantaged. And I don't think that that's a position that we should be in. There's, there's obviously room to improve and technology and a lot of things are going to do that. Um, but, but it shouldn't fall on us to, to do this. It's a global issue, not a city one. And, you know, we've already done a lot to be green. Our, our mix right now, our renewable energy mix is 58%. Uh, renewable. And, and I think that's incredible that we've gotten that far and that's going to only continue to grow um, as technology uh, improves over the years. And so um, I just think that it makes, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense for our city to, to be pushing this issue on our own. Um, and lastly, I would just say, I think and we're going to be voting, I know in September on a, a larger plan, but I think it's important that if we are going to adopt these goals and frankly, it'd be more helpful for me to get there if we knew the exact costs uh, associated with achieving those goals, whether it's on the city as an entity or on the people who live in this city. Um, and we know the legislature is gonna impose quite a few things this year that's gonna be costly on our citizens. And I just simply don't wanna add to that. So that's why I'll be opposing this this evening. Thank you, council member. Other comments from anyone? Yeah, I'll just speak briefly. We've had a lot of chance to speak in the community about this, and we did our major work on this together as a council when we adopted uh, greenhouse gas targets, even before the state of Washington did, and kind of led the way on that. Now we're just catching up again. And this will just keep us in alignment, and it really uh, it comes down to this question of cost of how much you pay now versus how much you pay later. And I've been really heartened by the community response to the work that we're doing and realizing that it's not uh, all or nothing one way or the other, that leveraging together uh, things will be cheaper for us, we'll have better outcomes, and we can bring people along together with really a better economy and a better community. So I want to put a special shout out to all the Sunrise Movement youth that I saw this weekend who were uh, so passionate and excited to hear we were uh, considering this today. And this will just put us in alignment with uh, what we have to do for the state anyway. And the difference that we're doing is we're working with our utility uh, directly to keep the costs uh, reasonable and the long-term benefits high. So I appreciate that. With that, we'll have a council vote. Roll call. Council Member Mum. Aye. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I. Councilmember Burke. Aye. Councilmember Cathcart. Nay. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. Okay. That passes six to one. And that gets us to the next ordinance. Ordinance C. 36036 relating to electric vehicle purchasing, repealing section 7.06.175 and enacting a new section 7.06.175A of the Spokane Municipal Code. 
Again, this is a local ordinance that gets us uh, into compliance with a longtime state ordinance about electrifying uh, municipal fleets as uh, the price overall for cost of ownership of vehicles goes lower for electric vehicles than the state law is that we have to replace them, uh, replace the fossil fuel vehicles with that. And so this just codifies that and gives a little guidance uh, to our fleet. We proposed this a couple years ago and fleet asked us for two years so that they could catch up and adapt to it, which they seem to be uh, doing more recently. Uh, we have two community members who would like to testify, and the first is Ann Murphy. You want to hit star three. Oh. All right. Ann, go ahead and introduce yourself again. You have up to three minutes. Hey, I'm sorry. I get confusing messages from the auto service here. Uh, so good evening again. And again, the League applauds the city of Spokane for moving forward and coming back to this issue to uh, require the vehicles owned by the city to be replaced with those run solely on electricity or biofuel um, in the future. Uh, the League of Women Voters of Washington supports advancing green transportation to include investing in that clean transportation that includes the electric vehicles as a means to establish a stable climate system for future generations. And as I said before, to be effective, the adoption and achievement of such goals must happen at the local level as well as the state and county and the world. And we are pleased that the city is moving forward with these uh, plans tonight. In addition, the League commends the city for committing to that long-term look at such investments in order to address sustainability and issues and improve our climate. And since it was brought up, uh, the League is also looking at the Sustainability Action Plan and will be providing comment on that in the future. So a uh, great way to uh, celebrate and work on things during this Earth Week. So thank you. Thank you. And then the other person we have signed up is Amber. Again, I think it's Osting. She's not, not on this line. Okay. She is not on the line, so maybe next time. Any council commentary? Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm also going to be voting against this ordinance as well, and really for just one reason. I believe that the the infrastructure cost should be calculated, at least for the, the time being, while infrastructure is not plentiful, I think it needs to be calculated in terms of those life cycle costs. Other than that, I, I really don't have an issue if we're, you know, looking at the lowest um, life cycle costs when we're moving forward. Thank you. Any other commentary? Yeah, one of the things that I'm um, excited about is that because City of Spokane is uh, moving ahead on complying with these laws that have been placed for at least a decade, this law, is we're, we were successful in getting a grant for charging stations. So we're able to get a lot of charging stations at no cost. And really, the cost of the charging station, even if you have to buy one, is going to be over all the vehicles it charges uh, for the life of the charging station. So it's not just a charging station for a vehicle. And the state law seems very pragmatic. You only move to it when it's cheaper to do it. And actually, transportation with fossil fuel is one of the biggest emitters of greenhouse gas. And so it is a cornerstone to our plan to get to um, uh, carbon neutral in Spokane and renewable energy 100% by 2030. So I'm really excited that. And I'm really happy with the Fleet Services Department has been working so hard to uh, catch up with us and give us options um, and just just today they offered for the new parking meter enforcement vehicles to be electric, which is great. Um, but with that, we'll have a roll call vote. Councilmember Mum. Aye. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and aye. Councilmember Burke. Aye. Councilmember Cathcart. Nay. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. That passes six to one. We do have a first reading ordinance, which no one signed up for. We'll read in a moment. But again, just a reminder that we did change the rules that you may 
uh, testify at first reading ordinances if you sign up ahead of time. And also, if for some reason um, the people who are going to be testifying later, if you're watching on uh, the internet or cable five, you're going to want to be on the phone because there's a long delay in that. So we'll call your name and be on to the next thing if you're watching it. So if you're wanting to testify, which several people are still, uh, please make sure that you're actually on the phone. And go ahead and read the first reading. Ordinance C36039, granting a non-exclusive franchise to use the public right-of-way to Evergem LLC to provide non-cable telecommunication service to the public that is subject to certain conditions and duties as further provided. Further action is deferred on the first reading ordinance. All right, and then next we have a hearing and a final reading ordinance. If you want to read that, and then we'll have a uh, presentation. H1, hearing on final reading ordinance C36034 relating to the Shoreline Master Program Periodic Review overseen by the Washington State Department of Ecology, amending the Spokane Municipal Code Chapter 17A.020 definitions, Section 17A.020.040 and .060, and various portions of Chapter 17E.060 Shoreline Regulations, Section 17E.060.110, .150, .290, .300, .340, .350, .350, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360, .360,
for the, the new year, what we did is a joint public comment period and public hearing with Ecology that culminated at the Plan Commission on February 24th. And while that public comment period was running, we also took it to a Plan Commission for workshop. And then it was briefed at the Urban Experience Committee on February 8th and April 12th. So I didn't touch upon this last week uh, at Advanced Agenda, but just to kind of run through, there are several sections of the code that are being amended. We are updating two sections of definitions. And then the bulk of it is concerned with actual the Shoreline Master Program. Um, I won't run through these. I know you have a packed agenda this evening, but just so the public is aware, this is also on the project website with a quick synopsis about what each amendment for that section is. So one thing that I want to bring to attention, so there are two items that might be unique to the agenda packet compared to other text amendments. One of those would be the ecology checklist. This is the review tool that um, ecology provides for municipalities to evaluate where the ordinance needs changes to comply with state regulations. And the other one is the comment matrix. So any comments that were received either by phone or in person or in writing were recorded. We forwarded them to the Department of Ecology for review as well, and then staff followed up to um, either let them know this is the scope of the amendment or we've made changes based on your comments and this is the proposed text. So one thing I, I also want to know is this has been a somewhat long process um, and we just want to say thank you to our assigned ecology staffers. They've been really helpful, uh, very responsive, and that has helped us stay on timeline and also hopefully done a really good job with our amendment. And it, you would not know this, but I didn't even think when we scheduled this that this would be Earth Week, but it feels very serendipitous that we should be talking about this during Earth Week. So Lauren Bromley and Jeremy Sykes with the Department of Ecology, who are our um, assigned ecology staffers, are available if council happens to have any questions. Any questions from council? All right. I'm not seeing any. Um, thank you, Amanda, for a really good presentation. I know this is one of your first projects since you've been working here that you uh, were finishing up. You did a really good job of telling us, I think, what we needed to know. And so I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Any questions? Council, oh, yes, nobody signed up for public testimony, but any council commentary before we vote on the amendments? All right, not seeing any, we'll have a roll call. Council Member Mum. Aye. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I, Council Member Burke. Aye. Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. Okay, that passes seven to zero. And that gets us to uh, two special considerations from our um, consent agenda that we're taking off the consent agenda. If you would like to read both of them, uh, Ms. Fister. Purchase from Dell, Round Rock, Texas, to acquire 385 ruggedized laptops, 250 in-car docks, and 119 desktop docks to be used by commissioned officers, $1,192,794.89, including tax. Value blank and value blanket renewal with Gulls LLC, Spokane for police jumpsuits for 2021, estimated $150,000 per year, including alterations and tax. All right. These are uh, police equipment items that have been budgeted for, so they're in the budget. It's not a special budget ordinance, but it is contracts. Uh, we had several people from the public signed up, and I believe there's only one person still on the line, but I'm checking with Ms. Allers. All right, and that would be Nicolette Ockeltree. If you'd like to um, speak to these items, you have up to three minutes.
Hi, can I ask a question first? Are these items yep. being taken together so that the testimony on both of them is one? Yeah. Yes. I'm taking, I'm taking okay. the testimony together. Okay. Well, I'll do my best. Yep. Thanks. Okay. No problem. So, um, okay, so according to the summary, uh, over 300 computers used by the Spokane Police Department will be out of warranty by the end of the year, but that doesn't mean that they are necessarily broken or unusable. So what will happen to these laptops and computers? Can they be wiped or refurbished and, say, given to the Spokane Public Schools or low-income families? Or if they have to be destroyed, will they be destroyed responsibly and recycled in any way possible? That's unclear to me based on what I read. Also, it says in the briefing paper that um, these new laptops that we will, they will be getting will have a warranty through 2026. So my question is, does that mean they will get all new laptops in another five years? And if so, did they look into whether or not it would be cheaper to lease um, some or all of the computers. I did notice on the invoice uh, that it says to ask about leasing options, but I'm not sure if uh, that was looked into or not, but if not, it should be something that's, uh, that's looked into. Um, so I, I'm seeing jumpsuits and laptops. It sounds like the police department is going back to school, and um, I hope that with these items, they're able to perform the tasks that are necessary. And I do see that these items were budgeted uh, into the 2021 budget, which is fantastic because if they're necessary, they need to be done. I just hope we're looking at the responsibility of this long term. So it's something that might, again, be needed to do in the future. And I also noticed that uh, there was no expenditure control form. And so I'm not sure why that was, um, but I'm hoping somebody can maybe answer that question. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Nicolette. Oh. Oh. So I have an answer to your question, Nicolette, that the expenditure control form was a requirement by the mayor's office for her departments, but that is no longer a requirement anymore from the mayor's office. But thanks for all your points and gives us some food for thought. So I appreciate that. Um, council commentary, I see Council Member Cathcart. Yeah, I'm going to uh, support and just wanted to say, I think Nicolette's idea on the laptops is a good one that we should look at. Yep, I agree. Uh, council Member Wilkerson. I'm going to support also, especially around the jumpsuits. In my conversation with police officers, there's several of them that jumpsuit allows them to carry their equipment and balance it throughout their body. They were having significant back issues and police were out on leave. And so it's just a lot ergonomically correct uh, for them to, to have those jumpsuits. All right. Any other council commentary? All right, we'll have a roll call. Council member Mum. Aye. Council member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Are we taking these together? Oh, yes, unless somebody objects to that. I'm sorry. Okay, no. okay, aye. Okay. Uh, Council Presidents and I. Uh, Council Member Burke. No. Uh, Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. Okay, both those contracts are approved six to one. And that brings us to open forum. And it looked like Amber Osting might have signed up for that. Uh, and I know Nicolette Ockeltree did. So, uh, but I believe Nicolette is the only one on the line. So Nicolette, if you want to introduce yourself one last time for the night and share with us, you have up to three minutes. Thank you uh, again, Council. Today I watched the Finance and Administration Committee meeting, and I was glad to see that the State Auditor's Office completed their investigation of CHHS for the city's request. But what I found upsetting was how vaguely many of the details of the investigation were presented. When Mayor Nadine Woodward and former City Administrator Crago held a press conference announcing this investigation last year, their main talking point was about how transparent the investigation would be. They also promised the citizens would receive a fully transparent report of the state auditor's findings. Unfortunately, after reading the publicly available report provided by the state auditor's office, 
and watching the financial and uh, administration committee meeting, I'm a little bit skeptical about whether or not that will happen. Um, at one point, someone from the state auditor's office mentioned citizens would have to file a public records request to access more details about the agencies and individuals uh, involved in the report, and this should not be the case. Um, the public records department is already overburdened and understaffed, and we were promised full transparency, and we deserve full transparency. Now, perhaps I'm preaching to the choir because I did get the impression that most, if not all, of the members of council were just as confused and frustrated with the lack of transparency uh, as I was. Um, but I really do hope that you guys continue to put pressure on them for reports so that we can all understand what was going on, so we can all make informed decisions. Um, and get, you know, what we were promised out of this investigation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Council Member Kinnear. Oh, sorry. Council Member Kinnear. Uh, I, we don't normally respond to um, open forum and to testimony. But for the record, I asked twice for full transparency and all the information that the auditors had. And we were assured that we are going to get that information. And if I get that information, I will share it. <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure that um, it is shared because I think that the citizens deserve that transparency. And the caller was correct. This has been going on for quite a while and they deserve to know just as we do. So thank you for that. Councilmember Burke, are you raising your hand or not? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, um, I think fair to say more to come. We didn't, it turned out it wasn't really an investigation. It was more of some recommendations on financial controls, which I think were well taken, but I thought we were going to get more. So we will continue to look into that. Um, with that, that brings us to the end of our meeting. I uh, hope everyone enjoys their evening, which still has plenty of light. Please enjoy. Earth Council Week. President? Yeah, Council Member Cathcart. Has anybody signed up for open forum? Just just that. Just Nicolette was. So, okay, no, but nobody else. Okay. Yep, yep. Anyway, I hope you enjoy uh, Earth Week. And usually I say take care of yourself and someone else if you can, but take care of Mother Earth as well. We're adjourned. <laughs>